All right, everybody. For today's critical thought, we're going to be beginning a discussion about replayability in the game industry. What it means to make a game that people want to keep coming back to again and again. And we're going to be focusing more on the single player side rather than multiplayer because that's an entirely different topic. And for this first part, we're going to be discussing what biomes are and what they mean for designing a digital landscape or digital game space. Now, the classical definition is a naturally occurring collection of flora and fauna in a given region. So temperate, arctic, desert, forest, you name it. Now, the problem with that is that when we're talking about game design, we are defining the game spaces. So because of that, for our talk today, a biome in video games is a collection of all the preset values or events that can occur within a given area. Now what that means is this can be everything from enemies, items that can drop, resource nodes, special events, uh, weather conditions, you name it. But the point is these are hard values. And as we've talked about before, when it comes to replayability, it's not just about pure randomization. There has to be a measure of control there. Now, with that said, in the biomes, you'll see biome design in any game that's built around procedural or randomly generated content, be it open world, survival, roguelikes, RPGs, stuff like that. And I've played my fair share from recently with Darkwood, The Flame of the Flood, Don't Star, Minecraft, Terraria, you name it. There are a lot of examples of using these, this kind of biome focus. And it is a requirement to understand both its utilization and the philosophy if you want to build a random or procedurally generated game space. Now, taking things a little bit further, Biome design is essentially the idea of, I'm going to create a set area. So imagine if my screen right here is a game map and different nodes or different areas are represented by a biome. Now, many games will try and stitch them together. Some of them will keep them as separate elements, such as the idea of floors. In the Biome of Isaac, each floor, I'm sorry, each two sets or each pair of floors is a biome within that area. This is where you got like the basement, the caves, the flooded areas, stuff like that. And again, this is a way of categorizing and compartmentalizing what your game space is going to offer to the player. Now, designing a biome is a very complicated task. And you can see good and bad examples of this throughout the game industry, especially in the independent scene, with many developers going that route. If you've played lesser games, you'll see it kind of be like these areas are just like almost literally stitched together. I played one game that each area is basically defined by a square. And at each one of these lines, you can literally see that line that separates one biome from the other. Some games will be a little bit more clever and use a specific environmental obstacle or some kind of graphic to break up the biomes. Um, a classic example would be like the idea of rooms. If you look in Mega Man or Metroid, there's always those corridors that the player goes through that separates one area from another. Now, while that is a predefined example, the uh, philosophy still works. In Darkwood, for instance, each one of the three major areas in the first chapter, there is a specific environmental obstacle that separates them, like a house or a bridge or stuff like that. The point is you're trying to disguise the fact that the game is pre-generating these areas. Now, a few minutes ago, I said that a biome collects all possible elements that can spawn. And that's going to be a major part in an upcoming discussion about replayability. But just putting elements in a specific area does not create replayability. Because as we've said, these are preset or predefined values. I know if I'm in a mountainous region, for instance, what could spawn? 
I know if I'm in this zone, what enemies are going to appear. Even special events are predefined. If we looked at the game We Happy Few, for instance, that's a perfect example. Each point of interest is a predefined area. It's a house or a hill or whatever, and that is hard-coded. Where it appears, though, that's entirely up to the game. And again, that doesn't create replayability because it doesn't matter where it shows up if I'm doing the exact same thing each and every time. When we talk about roguelikes, especially action roguelikes like the Buying of Isaac, Enter the Gungeon, and many more, they'll go for like this kind of layer effect that each floor as you go up is its own biome. But the problem, again, is that if all you're doing is just shuffling elements around, that's not creating replayability. Because it doesn't matter whether I spawn here on the map, here on the map, over there, down there, if I'm still having to do the same objectives and the same possible things can show up. Now, biome design can also be a major factor of balance as well. And you'll see this in many open world or survival based games that procedurally generate the environment. What they'll do is, let's say the player spawns right here. They will place biomes around the player based on proximity and difficulty. So let's say if I'm here, this biome will be, let's say, a 1 out of 5. But then over here, this could be a 3 out of 5. And this way, while the game space is going to be procedurally generated, you're still creating some semblance of balance. You're not going to spawn the player right here and then put them in like a volcanic death zone when they first spawn in. And it's important to understand the balance that goes into biome design. Because the less biomes you have, the less re replayability you have as well. Because if there's only three possible environments that can spawn, that means there's only three possible differences. And players are very clever. Once they start to see the difference error or the differences or all the possible values in a biome, they will know immediately what to do. And again, the quicker the player can come up with a magic solution or a checklist to solve the game with, that's going to end the replayability right there. This is why even games like Civilization or Grand Strategy titles still suffer in the replayability part. Because even if the entire map is procedurally generated, it doesn't mean anything if I'm still repeating, okay, I have to go to where the food source is, or I should set up near a mountain, or stuff like that. Good biome design is again about creating variety and keeping things, or trying to build this world up. And like I said earlier, you want to start thinking about it as a almost compartmentalizing what's going to be in your game space. Biome 1 is going to include this enemy, this possible environment, these events, these items, and so on. Now, one very interesting you can do is to try to set up variations of biomes. So yes, you have a biome right here. But let's say there's different versions of it that can show up. Maybe a shadow version, a light version, or stuff like that. Another option is that let's say the game will generate the world out of five biomes. But you create 20 biomes for your game. What that means is while I'm only going to be seeing five per playthrough, those five are going to be entirely different. And that way it keeps the player guessing. For instance, in a game like a, a robot named Fight, even though the environments are procedurally generated, I am still going through the exact same biomes, game in and game out without any differentiation. So again, it doesn't matter what it spawns within them if I'm still repeating the same things over and over again. And again, good game developers can either mask the fact that they're using biomes or just create enough variation in the biomes that you never know what you're going to see. And that can create an amazing sense of variance that we're going to talk about in an upcoming part. But to begin to wrap things up for today, 
When you're thinking about your game, whether it's random or procedurally generation, you have to think about biomes. What are my environmental details? What's going to spawn? And again, while you can certainly add more events into a biome after release, the only way the player is really going to see something different is if you create new biomes. This is why the biome I say works so well with its expansions, because they add in different biomes for each quarter or every duo pair of levels. So maybe one time I play through the basement. Next time I play through the burning basement or the flooded basement where you get the picture. But again, anything you can do to keep the player guessing as to what's going on or how things are going to be played is ultimately going to make your game more replayable. To wrap up today's post, or I'm sorry, today's vlog, what are some of your favorite examples of biome design in video games? What are some amazing environments or set pieces that keep you guessing? And what are some games that it just seems too fake? Like you can see almost like it's like a going to a show and you see all like the strings but, or all the With that said, we are going to wrap things up for right now. Hopefully this is still recording. But for our next part, we're going to be discussing loot tables. So thank you for watching this piece. Be sure to check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Until next time, have a great day. Before we get to the credits, just want to give a quick shout out to the fans and supporters over on patreon.com slash GWBicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. If you like suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on patreon.com slash gwbicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.